All right, what is good, guys? Um, my name is Justin Ortiz, and you guys are probably wondering, who the crap is this guy, right? Who's this guy who is talking about that he's going to tell me how to go from a barber to a CEO? Um, and well, let me tell you. Uh, my name is Justin Ortiz. I have been cutting hair for about seven to eight years, licensed for about six to seven. Um, I have been an image consultant for about a year, year and a half. Um, I built my business from 17 to 19 from my mom's back porch, zero dollars. Um, about 200 is what I had and I spent all my money on clippers. Um, I did that, I got into a barbershop at 17. So I started cutting hair when I was 16, got into a barbershop at 17. Um, and in those two years, I busted my ass. By the time I was 19, I was making roughly eight to 10K a month. Um, and then I pretty much collapsed, bro. I had a burnout, if you will, and I couldn't be on my feet for more than a hour without like hurting I have sciatica now a whole bunch of hoopla was going on so I took a whole month off of work um, and that hurt me hurt me a lot it, it dug at my pride dug at my ego it dug at everything that I had built up um, and I lost a portion of my book by my book I mean like a portion of the people who I was cutting if you guys don't know what that means uh, my clientele diminished um, probably about like a quarter of it um, and then I for that month, I took a time off to focus on God, myself, and my health. So I started eating better, switched my diet, I went pescatarian. Um, I I was going to the gym every single day. So seven days a week, I was going to the gym. Um, I fasted during that season too for about a week or two. Um, and I prayed every single day, bro. Um, and I got back up to like, you know, stable stability. Because I, again, I couldn't have you on my feet for more than an hour, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, and yeah, once I opened back up, once I got back into the shop a month later, um, like I said, I realized half my book was gone. I also changed the days I was working, the amount of days I was working seven days a week before I changed that to about four to five, probably then four. Um, I changed my hours completely because I was working from like 7 a.m. to whenever. I remember leaving the barbershop at 12, 1 a.m. sometimes, bro. So I was pulling 12 plus hour shifts sometimes. Um, the daily though, I was probably definitely working anywhere from like 10 to 12 hours, like on average, seven days a week. Insane, 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 insane. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my background. And let me tell you a bit about my current. So my current state is I am currently living in a high rise in Orlando, Florida, where I'm operating out of. Um, I have scaled my business back up to about 6K a month, cutting from my apartment. Um, I'm on track to hit 10K in roughly two months. Um, so that's neat. Um, and I've built my social media platform, my Instagram, to about 5,000 followers. Um, I currently have about right under 200,000 um, K uh, social media visits in the past 30 days. So about 200,000 people have visited my account um, in the past 30 days. And yeah, so this is my current state. In terms of finances, I'm still cutting hair. Like I said, I've been practicing as an image consultant for about a year, year and a half. Um, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot in these few years um, about about the business, about branding, about marketing. Um, a lot of the back end. I feel like a lot of barbers don't speak on the back end of the business. They just talk about how to hustle and grind and how to get money and how to attract clients. That's it. It stops there. No, they don't talk about personal credit. They don't talk about business credit. They don't talk about optimizing your LLC. They don't even talk about opening up an LLC. They don't talk about uh, any of these these things. Uh, how, how to how to actually manage your finances once they come through. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people just shoebox money. They don't really put their finances in a specific account for specific things. Um, and this this gets into a, an unhealthy pattern of you mixing in your your personal funds and your and your business funds and you not actually being able to get loans for certain things personally and business wise all because you're just sloppy you're sloppy all over um i have fell down this rabbit hole and i worked with a number numerous amount of barbers who have fell down that rabbit hole as well and so this is what i'm trying to help you guys with to avoid the barber nine to five to avoid the barber rat race um a lot of barbers will build themselves up into this quote-unquote hustle and grind mentality and they end up just building themselves their own nine to five if you want to avoid that Please continue to watch this video here. So this, <clears throat> this training is gonna be called From Barber to CEO, right? So this is this is gonna help you be able to 
transform your mind into thinking like Barbara one into Barbara two, right? So let's go over Barbara one first. All right, so this is Barbara one, all right? Barbara one, this barber brands himself as a grind and hustler barber, right? Um, um, they, they probably talk about how they grind and hustle and how they got everything out the mud and yada, 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 yada. All right, all they do is talk about the hustle, the hustle, the hustle, the hustle, and they don't really know any behind the scenes business work. Um, this barber doesn't have his LLC and he's likely not even to have his barber's license. Um, the second part's embarrassing. The whole not having your barber's license is insane um, to me as you're being a practicing barber. Like as you're actually cutting hair, um, especially like inside of a barber shop, which is insane to me because a lot of barbershop owners don't care if you have your license. Um, it's embarrassing. The reason why I say it's embarrassing is because yes, I understand that you can go ahead and cut hair and not need your license to be able to do that. Yes, it's a talent, it's a skill, it's an art. I completely understand that. My thing is, how do you look as a professional? How do you look at somebody who is supposed to be carrying yourself as a boss, as a CEO, as a as a entrepreneur, as a quote unquote self-made, no one's self-made by the way, but as a quote unquote self-made person, um, how do you look when you don't even have a document stating that you are licensed to do this? Um, this will steer away some clients, not all clients. Most most people are actually okay with coming to sit down in an unlicensed barber chair, which is kind of weird to me as well. Um, this will bring up your social proof, your validity, the fact that you're actually passionate enough about something to get licensed in it. Somebody will pay more for the fact that you actually have the document. Um, example A would be um, someone who has a master's degree in something versus someone who has an associate's degree in something. That person who has a master's degree in something will likely get paid more than the person who has an associate's degree in something. And they're actually more likely to land the job with the master's degree than the person who even has the associate's degree. Um, boom. So the next thing is this barber takes payment through Cash App, Zelle, or Cash Only. This is also embarrassing. I used to beef with my dogs at the barbershop I used to work to before I moved into my apartment um, about why they only took Cash App payments or cash payments. Um, this is embarrassing. Um, using using a form of a card reader or or something more professional like stripes or prepayments, payments over before they even book you, it's way more professional, it's way more easy for you, and it's way easier to track all your finances. When you're bringing it through Cash App, trying to duck the government, and when you're doing cash only, trying to shoebox some money, it's embarrassing, bro. It's embarrassing. You're over here stacking, you're over here, oh, crap. You're over here stacking 20s, 20s in a shoebox, all right? And that's, that's just embarrassing, bro. It's embarrassing. Um, this barber doesn't pay his taxes. Um, that's self-explanatory. It's kind of crazy. Uh, this barber doesn't run his cash through a business bank account. Um, this, again, this is pivotal, bro. Um, people who are just taking cash app and Zelle and they're not running their, their money through specifically a business bank account, you're missing out on a lot of opportunity. You're missing out on, on the bank seeing that you actually actively make funds, that you make money. This builds trust with the bank. Seeing that you make a consistent amount monthly, they're willing to give you loans and or lines of credit um, when you go and ask them for it. This, that's, that's how that works. It, it builds validity. The same thing with the license. It builds social proof with the bank that you can do something as a business, that you're actively making income. Um, this barber likely has more clothes in his closet than he has money in the bank. Um, this is another embarrassing thing that's common in the barber industry that they want to be fitted up. They want to look like rappers. They want to go ahead and, you know, be iced out and all this other stuff, but they're still probably living with their moms or they're still, you know what I'm saying, renting an apartment. I'm renting an apartment right now too. There's nothing wrong with renting an apartment, but not having the accessibility or the choice to go and buy a property is embarrassing. And I'm speaking to myself as well because I'm not in that position. Um, it's embarrassing to me. Um, <clears throat> This barber probably drives a clap G37, a scat pack, or a BMW 3 Series. This is this is probably the funniest part of me because more than likely you were influenced by a friend of yours or a brother or somebody who has this car and gets a girl or you know what I'm saying, and you went ahead and you got it because it seemed cool to you. Your favorite rapper is driving scat packs in their music videos, and so you have to have one too. Um, you're not a rapper, first of all. Uh, secondly, um, why are you spending this much money monthly to try to look an image that you're not even you're not even really there yet to afford in most cases you know what i mean um a car payment is one of the easiest ways for you to just live the same six months over and over again when you're trying to grow um as someone who's not making any money so someone who's at like zero or like anywhere from one to four k a month when you're trying to grow um avoiding a car payment at all costs unless the car is actively making you money like let's say you're doing like straight house calls then cool that makes sense it's a, it's a write-off honestly 
excuse me, but someone who's just paying this to like look apart, it's embarrassing, bro. It's really embarrassing. Um, this barber does not invest in himself or business education. Um, all your money, again, is going to these clap, these clap cars and it's going to these clothes and these Jordans that you have to the point where you're not even investing in yourself. Um, and you're getting all your self-worth and self-validation through exterior things. You're trying to look apart. You're trying to drive apart to seem like you have something when you don't. All right. It's a very poverty mindset. Um, um, and you don't choose to love yourself enough to invest in yourself. Right? So you don't choose to love yourself enough to invest in your education, to invest in your ability to, to, to grow your mind, your heart, your wisdom. Um, you, you don't invest in yourself. You're not betting on yourself because you're over here trying to look apart rather than actually being the thing. <clears throat> this barber likely has celebrity barber in his bio. Um, this is just funny to me. A lot of people under 10K um, or even over 10K on Instagram will have celebrity barber and they cut one celebrity or even like a local celebrity. They cut somebody in their city. Um, and now they feel like they're a celebrity barber. Woo. And they think that that attracts something. And, you know, sometimes it could. If you go ahead and you cut Drake or if you cut Lil Durk or if you cut Lil Baby, yeah, you're going to get some clients based off of just face. You quote unquote made it to society because you cut a big name person. At the end of the day, they're just a person, bro. Um, and it's just common for a lot of non celebrity barbers, someone who cuts one or two celebrities, to put celebrity barber in their bio. Um, and then they're still doing all these things up top here. Don't have an LLC, aren't running their money through a what's it called? Shoebox and money every day. It's embarrassing. Uh, this barber likely spent all his money on clothes, shoes, and or new tools just to stunt on his friends and other barbers he works with. This is self-explanatory. Again, all the money you're spending could be going to self-education or somewhere that's actually going towards the business rather than going towards your outside validation. Um, this barber keeps all his cash in the shoebox under his mattress. All right, I should I should have drawn a circle right here. All right, let's do this. Uh, boom. All right, all right. You will keep living the same six months, six months over and over again. All right, you'll keep going and going and going and going and going in these six same months over and over again, brother. Um, all because again, you're trying to you're trying to what are you trying to do? Um, you're trying to keep all your money in cash. All right, so you're trying to be this guy right here who has, I don't know, what is this? Probably, this, does, this doesn't even look like more than like $2,000. It's a bunch of 20s. Um, it's probably like two to, it's a bunch of singles and 20s. This is exactly what a barber shoe box looks like. That's hilarious. Um, the 20s are their, their, their initial payments and the singles are all their tips. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're running, you're running your money through Cash App. You're doing this right here through Cash App and Zelle only. Um, um, you're not running your money through a business bank account. Um, you probably have more clothes than you have money in the bank. Um, you probably drive one of these three cars. <laughs> you don't invest in yourself at all. Um, you spend all your money on clothes and all that type of stuff just to look apart when you're not actually living the part. Um, and you keep all your money in the shoebox, bro. You're going to keep living the same six months over and over again. You're going to keep trying to be flashy when you're not actually making any actual growth to yourself or to the business. Um, this is embarrassing, bro. To you, like, like it's embarrassing for me when I was doing all this type of crap, man. You know what I mean? Um, and the reason why I'm saying embarrassing is because it is. That's, that's the only way I feel about it, bro. Um, this isn't to, like, attack you or anything like that. This is just to push you to have a different mindset. I hope that you guys are receiving, like, the positivity out of this. Please filter the... Don't look at my... Like, filter this, bro. I'm just a human at the end of the day. Um, anyways, this barber eventually turns into this, all right? Oh, shoot. Let's get this out of here. Okay, this barber eventually turns into this. So you become an OG in the barbershop at 40, 50, 60 years old. This is very common. Um, this barber has back and knee pain, um, hands and feet pain from years of hustling and grinding, right? From years of hustling. Oh, shoot. From years of... From years of hustling and grinding. Um, and me, personally, bro, like I said, I am 23 years old. I have been cutting for about seven to eight years. I started when I was 15, 16, somewhere around there. Um, and bro, like I said, I tapped out at 19 years old, bro. Like I burnt out at 19 years old because I was working every day, seven days a week, eating McDonald's in the morning, eating McDonald's at night, um, early wake time, late sleep times, bro. Um, and I was not taking care of myself, bro. Um, I currently have like sciatic pain. I have pains that shoot all the way from my butt to my foot. Um, um, I have neck issues. I have upper shoulder issues. I've dislocated my shoulder, my right shoulder roughly six times. 
Um, and this causes all types of nerve issues and cutting like this all day doesn't help that. Um, hustling and grinding, bro, is just going to beat yourself up. Um, this barber has no money in the bank and is still living day to day knowing that I can make it back tomorrow. This is one of the stupidest, this is one of the stupidest mindsets that you can have in life, bro. No matter what plane of existence that you're operating in, barber, hairstylist, any form of entrepreneurship, brother, this is the stupidest thing. This is the stupidest thing you can ever tell yourself. So as a barber, we oftentimes tell ourselves like, oh, like, let's say, boom, like the barbershop going out tonight, we're going to spend 300 at the bar, whatever it is, $100 at the bar, whatever it is. Oh, I made $300 today. I know I'm going to make it back tomorrow. Fucking idiot. That's so stupid. Like, why did I think that? Why did I think that? You know what I'm saying? Like, and why are you thinking that? Like, you're literally just recycling the same $300 every day. You're not growing anything. You're not growing anything. You're not investing it into yourself. You're not. You're not doing that. You're not doing anything. That's that's literally like the epitome of stupid, brother. This barber has little to no knowledge on business credit, and his personal credit is probably jacked up. So this is this is key. His business personal credit is probably jacked up. A lot of people do not know that your personal credit, your personal credit, is the your personal credit is the key that unlocks business credit. Aha. So doing the things that I was telling you before, fun, funneling all your money through a business bank account proves validity to the bank so that when you ask them, um, hey, I need credit or hey, I need, a, I need a loan, they're like, okay, let's see how much money you make. Oh, we can approve you for X amount of dollars. Um, but first, we need to check your personal credit. So if you don't have any business credit built up, what they need to do, they're going to run your personal credit to see how you're doing on the personal end. And your personal credit would jumpstart It'll guarantee, it's called a guarantor, kind of, you self-guarantor um, your business credit, brother. I don't know why I started saying that. Um, that's, that's, that's how that works. A lot of people don't know that. Um, this barber is still renting an apartment or home and doesn't own a house or property due to the fact that he never learned to properly manage his finances and never builds up any credit. Um, I wish that I started my credit a bit earlier and I wish that I had a mentor or somebody over me to show me how to manage my money and manage my credit earlier so that when I was... I think it was like two, three years ago. I think I was 21 when I went to go apply for a house because I was filing my taxes wrong. And I was writing everything off like the gurus told me to write it off, write it off. Oh, you can write it off. You'll be fine. Um, 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 that's, how, that's how you avoid paying taxes. Nobody told me. Nobody told Justin. Low poppy cuts. Nobody told me that when you write stuff off, it counteracts your income. So say you make 50K this year and you write off $25,000 worth of stuff that you spent. To the government, you only made 25K. And so oh, here I am writing off a bunch of stuff to avoid as much taxes as I could. And I probably only made per the per the government like six thousand dollars that year or whatever it is. I go to apply for a freaking house and they turn the turn the laptop around laughing at me. What are we gonna do with this? I don't know. What are we gonna do with that? You know what I'm saying? Um, it's embarrassing. Um and so yeah, now like I said, I've been I've been properly doing the things to in hopes in the future eventually be able to own a property. Um, um and again, there's nothing wrong with renting if you're renting smart. Um, this is just like, this is this is geared towards the people who don't have an option. Like you're literally renting because you cannot get approved for a house. That's crazy. You know what I mean? And even for me, that's crazy, Justin. That's insane. Um, especially for working for seven, eight years and I can't get approved for a freaking house. That's insane. It's insane, bro. Um, um, but you know, if you are renting an apartment, bro, and like you have properties, but I know a lot of people that do this, a lot of rich people that do this, they don't live in any properties that they actually own. I think it's stupid. A lot of people. Um, and it's because like, why would you live in an asset when you could use an asset? And I get it. You know what I'm saying? Why not rent where you don't have to cut your own grass and, you know, keep up with certain things. Like in my apartment, if my fridge goes bad, I just make a phone call. They come up here and fix it. Um, I don't have to do crap. Um, and so that's how a lot of people think. And then they rent out their properties because it actually makes the money. Hey, winners win. Um, this barber likely has a, has a lot of baby mama drama. It's very common in the barber industry. I'm not going to touch that too much. Um, this barber likely says he needs a female that can keep up with him, his hustle and grind, and go 50-50 with him purely due to his inability to provide for his people. This is very embarrassing for any man, um, including, including myself, brother. This is very embarrassing for, for any man, bro. Obviously, if you're young and you're, you're functioning, you're figuring it out, cool. As long as you're actively going toward that direction. Um, but there's a lot of people who have built this lifestyle, like I said, this hustle and grind mentality. Um, and they, 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 they say that they have to go 50-50 with a female. And they, like, they're, they're on that, that uh, what they call it, sigma, sigma male, um, whatever you want to call it, like, like area 
of 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 the social media platforms currently. They're over here like the, like in that argument of the world, bro. That they're they're saying like, oh no, a uh, girl to go 50 50 She need to match my hustle. She need to match this. Shut up, dude. Every man wishes that he could provide for his wife, provide for his mom, and provide for his kids. It's facts. It's absolutely facts. Um, you wish that as a man. You do. It does something to you, and it does something to them when they see a man who can do that. Um, you don't want to go 50-50. You tell yourself that because you don't want to grow. That's that's what that stems from. You do not want to grow, right? You do not want to have to do the hard work that it takes for you to earn more money for you to provide for somebody. You don't want to have to become the person that actually has to make that more money. People say that money changes people. I completely disagree. You have to change to earn more money. It's it's just a law of life. It's a law of like finances, brother. You need to you need to learn new thought processes, throw away poverty mindsets, and, and and bring in wealth mindsets, throw away fear mindsets, and bring in faith mindsets. It's a lot of self self transitioning that you have to do to be able to attract the things that you are actively trying to go after, right? This is where you become. If you do all the things up here, right? So if you go ahead and you and you do all these things, like I said. Right, you grind yourself and you do this and yada yada yada. Woo doo do it, reread it. You drive a clap G thirty seven. LOL. You live the same six months, right? And because you live the same six months, you eventually become this barber who's 40, 50, 60 years old and is OG and is living with all these problems, bro. Right? Because you never took initiative over your life, you never took initiative over who you are, and you never started gripping life by the balls, bro. You never started that. You never, you never took faith. You never, you never trusted God and his ability to groom you into the person that you're supposed to be. So you went ahead and you attacked life the way that you thought it was. You took life easy, so life became hard. If you attack life hard, life becomes easy. If you attack life easy, life will always be hard, brother. It's only, it's only hard to get rich once. I haven't gotten rich yet, but it's, it's been fucking hard. It's only hard to get rich once, all right? Being broke forever hurts forever. Anyways, this is Barber 2. This is where you want to become, right? Barber 2. I don't know why it's uneven, but I'm not going to talk about it. Um, this barber brands himself as a business owner, a CEO. This barber has his license and has his bit, his barber's license. So he has his LLC by license. I mean, like he has his business license and he has his barber's license. This barber receives payment before the service through Stripe or any other payment software that links to a booking site that deposits directly into his business bank account. No more cash app. Bro, if I can preach this to any freaking barber in the world, bro, to any business owner in the world, no more cash app. It's completely unprofessional. People do not like doing it. Um, and it, it just says a lot about you and your business. You do not want to present yourself as a proper brand. You don't want to present yourself as a company. Imagine if you went to Walmart. And yeah, it's convenient. Don't get me wrong. Imagine if you went to Walmart, bro, and everywhere it was like just cash app. You'd be like, what in the world? Right? Their value would go down because you're used to pulling out your car or using Apple Pay or some form of like, you know, rather than them just having a freaking uh, QR code and saying, oh yeah, cash app us. What in the world, bro? Anyways, um, this barber receives payment before the service through a system like Stripe, right? So through a system like Stripe or an, any other payment software that links directly to a booking site that deposits directly into his business bank account. This barber pays his taxes, properly writes off his expenses. So don't, you know, me, I don't like to lie, don't lie. Uh, obviously, like once you get higher up in finances, there are loopholes and ways that you don't necessarily have to lie that you can go ahead and finesse your taxes. But you know, the first two years of business, you can be broke. After the first two years, you actually want to start applying pressure when it comes to paying your taxes so that you can have some form of validity so that you can actually, again, attain credit and attain loans so that you can eventually become the business owner that you want to be and not have to be cutting hair every day and night. Um, this barber is constantly reinvesting his money back into the business, not on freaking clothes and Jordans and other stupid stuff. This barber either drives something really nice, right? So he either has the money to afford something really nice for real, like a like a Mercedes or or a, not a clap to BMW 3 Series, you know what I'm saying? Like a M an M Series maybe or whatever it is. Like he probably actually drives something pretty pretty freaking fancy, or he still drives an old beater car. There are plenty of a lot like high income barbers that I know that bro they've been rocking out with the same car for forever because they understand the trap of paying a high a high high bill every month that isn't pouring back into them or their business they understand it so what do they do they'll dug out with their car i used to have a car i had a i had a, I had a back when my, back when i was making those numbers back in 19 years old i bought a, a 20 2016 genesis coupe r spec 
3.8. Um, had the Brembo brakes in the back, the big tires in the back. I got videos of me going crazy in this thing. Um, engine blue. Engine blue. Thankfully, I had I had saved up to be able to pay it cash. Again, I, I believe in paying cars cash. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. Um, that's just a me thing. Or if it makes sense to finance it. If you're actually going to use your car to go attain more money, then cool. If you're going to get the car and put it on turbo, hey, that's an asset to me. Um, if you're going to get the car and actually like if you're, if you're a barber who needs to go from point A to point B um, because you're doing house calls, hey, it's an asset. Use it. You see what I'm saying? That makes sense to me. What doesn't make sense is for you to car to barely drive or for you to car to flex to go pick up females or, or to, go, to, go, to, go, to go flash to your friends. You know what I'm saying? I have been there, brother. I have been there. It's stupid. It's stupid. I currently have been driving a, a 08 Mazda 3. I still got the roll-up windows, bro. My AC works when it wants to. I barely drive. I work from home. I don't need nothing nice currently. Do I want something nice? Absolutely. I want me a Bentley. I want me another Jenny. I want me a Tesla. Like, for sure, bro. You know what I mean? I'm a bit of a car enthusiast. Like, I like driving stick. I grew up driving stick. So I want some other stuff too. But don't even worry about all that. What I'm saying is is, is currently, like, someone, someone who's really making money, bro, like, they normally pull up in something really nice or they normally pull up in, like, some Toyota Camry or something like that. I know a lot of rich people, bro, that they drive and dress completely normal. Um, the real rich people literally... They might drive something nice, but they're normally wearing something completely normal. Think about think about the creator of Apple. I can't remember his name right now, but every time he presents the iPhone on stage or has presented the iPhone, I don't know if he passed or not. I think he has. Um, every time that he presents the iPhone, he's wearing Walmart shirts and a white T-shirt. He's not, bro. He's not up there in Gucci. Freaking retard. You think you think you think real people like real people are wearing Gucci? No, they're not. Anyways, this barber has multiple savings accounts for different aspects of his business and tracks his finances. This is like pivotal, bro. I wish that I knew this younger. I would have had way more money saved up currently. I would have had um, my taxes done correctly. I would have, bro. This is pivotal, bro. So me personally, I have, I think currently I have three savings accounts for my business and it's going to be four pretty soon. The fourth one's going to be innovations. I currently do not have an innovations account. So right now I have an emergency funds. Emergency funds is there for emergencies. If it's not an emergency, do not touch that. You do not need it. Don't touch it. It's there for emergencies. That's there for another COVID for another, uh, I probably can't even say that many too, right? That's there for another, um, um, plan, pandemic. Um, um, you know, another, um, world altering event that, you can't work for a few months possibly. Um, that's what that's there for. Um, um, I have a, a tax account that I put 10% of my income monthly into this account so that when tax season come, I'm, I'm not hurting my personal income. I have a whole savings account for that so that when it's time to pay it, it doesn't hurt. Um, 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 I have a tithes account. I'm big on giving. I think that, I think, I believe in the, the system of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity means that like whatever you give, you receive. Um, and I think that if your level of giving um, isn't at a high level, then you'll never become the business owner that you want to be. Bro, uh, this is a quote that I learned a while ago. Um, um, be the client that you would like to be. What do I mean by that? Shop how you would want people to shop with you. Um, write that down somewhere. Um, this barber dresses like a CEO. Oh, the innovations account. I'm so sorry. The innovations account. Um, this is the one that I need to imply. And this is the account that essentially like whenever you're trying to make drastic business inquiries or improvements. Um, so like, let's say uh, you're buying a couple new sets of clippers. Like, you know, clippers are pretty expensive nowadays. I'd say that an average price for a clipper is anywhere from like 150 to 200, which is insane. Or when I started, the average price for a clipper was like anywhere from like 80 to like 150. 150 to 200 is insane, bro. Like <laughs> you don't find no clipper for 80 nowadays, bro. Um, not even the clipper that I used to get. Like you used to be able to buy magic clips for like 80 bucks, bro. You cannot find magic clips for 80 bucks anymore. Um, <clears throat> if you do, let me know. If you got a plug, DM me. Lil Poppy Cuts. Um, yeah, but th th that's what that's for. Improvements. If you're doing like a, a drastic like branding um, change, if you're going to change your logo, all that type of stuff, that's what that's there for. Um, this barber dresses like a CEO, like an executive. Bro, and whatever you view a CEO, bro, that's how you dress. You know what I mean? Like, but I, I am really against designer, especially when you're broke. Um, I'm really like, like if you're, if you're actually cool, like if you actually have the funds to get it, then cool. You know what I'm saying? You can, but like, <laughs> bro, I just, I feel like designer, they market to poor people. All the rich people are not wearing designer. It is people who make under a million dollars who are wearing designer. And the reason why I say a million is because I don't view a million as a lot of money. I don't view 400K. Like, 
I think I think as a man with a wife and three kids, so like the average family in America, four hundred thousand dollars is when you actually start living comfortably. If if you're not making that much money in America, you're not living comfortably. You're living very uncomfortably. And that's that's up to that's up to person. That's up to a person. But and the average man who has a family, if you're making like a hundred thousand dollars a year, you again you're uncomfortable because you have your wife working and that's causing problems in the house. Um, your kids are not in the school that they want that you want them to be. I mean, that's causing problems in the house. Um, you don't have the time for yourself or for your kids. And that's causing problems in the house. See what I'm saying? Like, like now two hundred k. Your wife's probably not working. Um, but still, your kids probably aren't at the school you want them to be. Um, um, you're probably not in the house because, again, you're 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 going crazy making that 200k, 400k. You've probably built a, a really good business, um, a decent business, and you're making enough funds to be able to you know have some time for your family, actually have a couple of vacations throughout the year, um, and not break the bank every vacation. Um, your kids are probably going to a decent school that you want them to be, or homeschool, like I want my children to be. Um, your wife is definitely not working at 400k and if she is it's because she wants to be so she's actually operating out of a place of fulfillment rather than force um, um, and so this brings a lot of like again comfortability in the household um, yeah um, this barber is constantly experiencing growth in all areas of his life and his business all right who does this barber turn into that's the question let's scroll down this barber normally retires at a young age from cutting hair every day just to get by Right, so that's the embarrassing thing about what happens up here is that like, like we're doing this every day. We're doing this day in and day out just to get by. And again, these forty, these forty and sixty year olds who are doing this are cutting hair every day still to live, but they're still trapped in that four to six k range, um, not living a fulfilled life, um, going fifty fifty with a wife or a baby mama, or paying child support. Oh my gosh, I need to type that too. This barber retires at a young age from cutting hair. Um, this barber ends up becoming an actual shop owner or something far more. Real estate, multiple business, um, multiple businesses, online sales, coaching. This barber becomes something way bigger than just a barber. Um, yeah. This barber easily has 10K saved in emergency funds and has other forms of investments accounts, whether this is stocks, crypto. I believe in, I believe in crypto a lot. I believe in some stocks a lot too. Um, real estate, other forms of investing, or like I said, other businesses. This barber has an abundance of knowledge, an abundance of knowledge on personal credit and has, oh, on business credit and has great personal credit because he learned that the only way to business credit is personal credit. He learned that the only way to business credit is personal credit. You must first build your personal credit before you can even try and go attain business credit. That's law. That's how it works um, for most people. There are some loopholes. But the general the general consensus is that you have to have good personal credit for you to get business credit. You can you can sign up for these programs that they can you can use their credit information so that they can see it. But that's just a whole bunch of stuff, and most people aren't even in the position to pay somebody to get on their line of credit to use it as personal credit. Again, it's still it's still being perceived as personal credit um, before it's business credit. This barber's on track to buying or already owns a home slash properly due to his discipline and learning about personal and business credit as well as managing finances. He learned to manage his finances well. He learned to manage his personal and business credit well, um, um, his personal credit, and, and then attained business credit. And so he's he's on track. He's either on track or he's already or he already does it. You know what I'm saying? He already does that. Um, this barber is either single, becoming the best version of himself, or has found a wife who he's either preparing for a marriage or is already married to. Um, this is big, bro. Like casual sex and just casual dating, spending all this money on these freaking women that don't do nothing for you, um, that you probably don't even get into what you want to get into with them. You know, you don't even you don't even get what you want, fam. Most cases, you go, you spend all this money, and then what? You're not that guy. Most people aren't that guy. That's the reality. Most people aren't that guy. They're not. They're not. They're not getting what they want from a female every time. Um, and if you say you are, then cool. You know, if you're that guy, then cool. Um, you're still still spending a bunch of freaking money, a bunch of energy. You're still making the same amount of money. You're that guy with females, but you're not guy, not that guy in the mirror. And that's what matters. That's what matters, bro. Um, this barber understands that he is a man and desires to provide for his wife and his children and possibly even more of his extended family. I personally want to be able to pay for anything that my mom wants, anything that my sister wants, anything that my my uh my nieces and nephew want 
I want to be able to provide for my future kids, bro. I want to be able to go to Puerto Rico to where a lot of my family lives um, um, and be able to, you know, go up there and, 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 and do whatever they want to do up into the, the, the acres that, of land that they all live on together. Um, I want to be able to do a lot of stuff, bro. You know what I mean? I want to be able to, to provide at a level that is, um, that is aggressive. I want to be aggressive, an aggressive provider. I just want to be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? If people ask me, yeah, like, no problem here. And most people, oh, I do. Won't you, won't you feel bad for people just always asking you because of money? Isn't that the point? To some extent, bro. Like, not to all people, but I'm just saying, like, like, for, like most people don't want to attain wealth just for themselves. Most people want to attain wealth to be able to be a provider. And then it's just funny because then once you become that provider, once people are asking you to provide, you, they, like, they get upset. Oh, you only asked me for money. That's what you got rich for, buddy. Who in the world? Beat a man. And then teach them how to talk to you. It's still part of being a man. So this is the route, buddy. This is your route to business and financial success. Um, the first step is to have faith, right? Have faith in, in the ability to believe something that is bigger than you. For me, this is God. Um, the one true God, Jesus Christ. Um, and the immense vision. The huge vision that he's given me over my life, bro. I, I've had a huge vision in terms of finances and in terms of uh, outreach, um, in terms of what he would do with my tongue, in terms of what he would do with my mind since I was a child. I know that I have been chosen since a child and I am, I am choosing to accept the calling. Um, many many are called, but few are chosen. Um, I'm chosen and I am walking in that every day. Um, but you have to have faith, bro. You can operate out of fear and you can operate out of faith. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot operate out of both. <clears throat> uh, this is, no, I'm chilling. This is the second step. Uh, the second step is opening up your LLC. Uh, this step is the moment where you start betting on yourself and the ability, and your ability to operate as a business, not just as a grind and hustler. Again, this is the stupidest thing you can do, bro. That grind and hustle mentality, yes. Getting rich is hard work, and owning a business is hard work. It is, it is, it is, it is. But if you realize, poverty-minded people are so connected to this grind and hustle mentality. They just want to be viewed as working all the time. Work, 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 work. work. Is what you want to do every day? You want to flick your wrist like this every day? Or would you rather just hop on a Zoom and, and be able to sit back in and, and, and go through business meetings all day? Make phone calls and, and while you're in Bali or while you're in freaking... I don't know, the Maldives or, or in Africa or the Middle East, whatever you want to be. You know what I'm saying? Bora Bora. I would love, I love the beach, bro. Bora Bora seems like a freaking movie to me. Um, um, yeah, bro, like this is this is that moment where you start betting on yourself, bro. You start betting on yourself. Um, you create an LLC and you are now established as a business. You take yourself more seriously and people will start taking yourself more seriously. You have a business card with your with your brand name on it, bro. You have a website. You have all these different types of things, bro. And it's like, okay, you're established. You know what I mean? People will start respecting you more because you respected yourself to bet on yourself. <clears throat> the third step is investing in education that teaches you what to do now that you have your LLC and how to start optimizing your LLC for things like tax write-offs and business credit. Um, but this is huge. Um, your ability to actually use your LLC properly. I know a lot of people who have their LLC and they don't even like know what to do. They don't know how to open up a business bank account. They don't know how to build up the personal credit. They don't know how to ax the bank for a loan. They don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Um, and you have to start climbing that ladder. And having somebody who can help you do this um, step by step, you know, like a done with you type of thing um, is, is amazing. I did all this jump on myself off of YouTube University. YouTube University is great. It's a great tool. Um, if you don't have the money to invest in anybody um, to help you throughout this process, definitely go through YouTube, bro. Um, it's just going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of um, grit, a lot of self-pushing. Uh, Excuse me. A lot of self-push. Um, push yourself. If, if you can do it on YouTube, you can do it. I did it. LLC, business bank account, multiple savings accounts, um, business credit, personal credit, all off YouTube. Credit, I was definitely helped. I had a, I had a, I had a bit of a mentor. Um, a bit of a mentor when it came to credit, um, a bit of a, yeah, a credit mentor for sure. Um, great guy. Um, but the, he did invest. I was paying him about a hundred a month at the time, um, for knowledge and for him to help me fix my personal credit so I can attain business credit. Great guy. Cannot remember his name right now. Uh, Jamel, Jamal, Jamel, 
I think it was Jamil. Um, great guy, bro. Great guy, great guy. Um, yeah, invest. Invest what you do. Like I said, I was paying 100 a month. In personal education, bro, I have probably spent um, close to, if not over, $10,000 um, in the past eight years, um, which is nothing. I met this one guy recently who has spent like, what was it, seven... I think it was seven hundred thousand dollars in self worth, like self education, bro. Like in, yeah, like reinvested in himself, and that that just blew my mind. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, bro, um, this is the third step. So you do you do these three things. Like I said, have faith, open up your LLC, and invest in somebody who can help guide you with these things. Um, you eventually become everything that's in this right here. All right, you eventually become a homeowner, or you're preparing to be a homeowner. You eventually have a wife and a family. Um, you eventually, you eventually have um, um, easily over ten thousand dollars saved in your bank account, especially if you're prepared for all this other stuff, bro. You probably have like anywhere from ten to hundred k. Um, I know some barbers who have hundred k in their bank account right now. It's insane to sound, it's insane, it's insane to hear, but like it's real. Um, it's it's real. All those all those Instagram barbers who's charging like two hundred dollars a cut, bro. You don't think that they have like fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, a hundred k in their bank account? You're freaking slow. Um, you're really slow. Um, but yeah, or even like someone like Taylor Cuts who's charging six hundred dollars a cut. Oh my gosh, Barbara's Barbara two hundred dollars a lot, two hundred dollars a lot. There you go. We got dudes charging six hundred. Insane. All right. So you want to you want to become all these things in this, bro? You start you start here. Faith, LLC, um, and invest in invest in yourself, bro. This is your route to business and financial success. Um, the hustle and grind mentality is dead. Hustle grind sound, that, uh, mentality. The hustle and grind mentality is dead in 2024. The best way for you to grow as a barber business in 2024 is to throw out the hustle and grind mentality and welcome in the businessman, CEO, owner mentality. Guys, my name is Justin Ortiz. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that it was valuable for you. Um, if it was, drop a subscribe, drop a like. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, it is what it is. At the end of the day, God works. Um, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys got something out of this. And um, follow me on Instagram for sure, though. Lil Poppy Cuts, L I L P A P I C T S, where I post a bunch of valuable content in relation to hair. Um, and yeah, stay blessed.